Well, some other things I already mentioned, the central nervous system, I think that is something that we really have to be aware of and uh, keep that in mind. Difficult words, cytokines, and I will come to back to it later. There are, let's call them proteins that are circulating in our blood and they can cause growth and function. They are very important. We all have them. But for example, when you have a fever, some of the cytokines can be elevated. And we know that lots of the signs and symptoms for HLH as well as for LCH are due to an overproduction of cytokines. And um, so we do know what is causing the signs and symptoms. We do not always know what is sort of the initial, um, you know, let's call it stream upwards, what is causing the cytokine uh, storm. Although in HLA nowadays, we do know that there are certain genetic defects, or there are gene defects in this disease. And of interest is that in the different countries, and I'm, I'm sure that Dr. Filipovic will talk about it, in different countries you have different defects. For example, in the Netherlands we have a lot of people who come from Turkey. And sometimes those are people who come from a smaller city and they are sort of um, interrelated. So of course when there's an abnormality in one family and, and you know you marry with your cousin or your niece, then obviously there's a chance that she has this abnormality as well. When you have, and it's genetic abnormalities and when you have one problem and the one and uh, one is good then the good one will take over and you don't see your, you don't see the problem but when there is a family with one problem and one good one and they marry and they both have one problem and one good one 25 percent will get the problem and the problem gene for the mother and the father and then you have hlh so we see in those cr certain groups of pa patients we see more problems for example in the turkish families well the treatments few words, in the past, virtually 100% died of HLH, and um, I think, you know, we, they tried a lot of things, but now, within the History Seed Society, we moved on and came to, we now have a patient, we register, and if it is a familial case, we go through the protocol, if it's unresolved, if it's a secondary and it's resolved, you can stop treatment, so we know now what to do, and again, these are guidelines, not only for us, but every physician in the world can use these kind of guidelines and know now how to treat these diseases. 94 was the first international protocol. We are now in 2004. We had the second. And actually, just to show you, in 94, we started cyclosporin on week 8 9. And here there was no cyclosporin. When we look back to our database, we saw that a lot of patients passed away in the first eight weeks. So just a small change in the 2004 that we added cyclosporin and we hope we just cure those patients who didn't do well um, in the first eight weeks. The overall survival, however, has been, I think, tremendous. 55% of whole HLH 94 survives of this disease. And again, as I showed you earlier in the beginning, virtually 100% of the patients died of this disease. Furthermore, you have to realize this is not only USA or Western Europe. There are also countries involved where the standards, although the physicians are quite good, the standards of care are not less developed. I know I went to Argentina and the physician told me, you know, we do very well, but the moment that they leave the hospital, they go back to their villages and, you know, they don't take care about um, cleanliness, about food or those kind of things. When I went to Brazil, they said, you know, if they give them money to come back to the hospital, they use the money for other things. So nowadays they give them bus tickets because with the bus tickets they have to come to the hospital. So those are really problems and in an international pro protocol, this has to be taken into consideration as well. My last five slides, my story of my yeah, research life, I guess. I think that LCH is one big puzzle. And um, what we did over the years, we what I try to do is I would like to finalize the puzzle before Jeff is, you know, leaving the, the association, I guess. So, and, and every time what I do is I pick a little piece of the puzzle and I try to find somebody who knows a lot about this problem, who doesn't know about LCH. But for example, when I talk about, let's call cytokines, there was a person somewhere in the Netherlands who is doing a lot of cytokines, had never heard of LCH. And I came in contact and I tried to work together and we found that cytokines is very important in this disease. Chemokines the same. And I'm just going to show you four slides because I think it's intriguing. This is a slide to show you that the normal lung on cell, it's called an antigen 
presenting cell. It's a cell with lots of arms. It picks up, let's call it a virus, or we call it antigen. It will pick it up. So that's why it's in the skin. They, they have kind of arms. They pick up um, antigen. And then they roll to the lymph nodes where certain cells can kill those antigens, those viruses. So they, the lung cell is kind of the person who is at the gate and said, you're good, you're not good. The one who's not good, he picks up and he rolls with it to, um, let's call it the cellar, and there are the killers, and they chaka, and then they're dead. <laughs> so lung heart cells are very important in our immune system. They are really the first cells that are there. But in LCH, the lung heart cells are more rounded. They, do, they lack these arms, so they are in a different state. So we know now that there is something different. And um, one of the things that we try to find out is, why are they different? Can we find out? Because if we know that they are different, we know is there a state of the cell that it stops to be become more that it goes to lymph node? And what we did is normally, and I'm just going to call you the six and seven. It makes it a little bit easier. Don't don't look at CCR. It's difficult names. When you're in the skin, you're six positive and seven negative. To go to the lymph node with your virus. You have to downregulate six and upregulate seven. So you have to be six negative and seven positive to roll to the lymph node. So the cells that are made in the bone marrow, they go to the blood, go to the skin, where we saw the lung out cells with the arms, they are six positive, seven negative. They are quite immature. They pick up the virus and then they are more become more mature and they downregulate the six and they become upregulated for the seven and they go to the lymph node and there the articulus chaka. However, in LCH, what is happening? We checked in 22 samples, all the cells in LCH are, are six positive and seven negative. So they stop. They cannot become more mature. They cannot roll to the lymph node. So they are stuck in their, in their environment. And, you know, of course, we thought if we can give a treatment and kick them a little bit and became that they become a little bit more six negative and seven positive, maybe they can go to the, to the lymph node. Well, it's not happening. We see that the LCH cells can be compared to other genetic cells, but they clearly, there is a maturation block. They stop. We cannot get them out of, and that's why they are stuck in their lesion. You know, they are six and they're not seven, and that's why they're stuck in this lesion. <laughs> and um, this is just something that we know, we need to know, because treatment for a seven might be different for a six. You know, when you want to kill a cell, it's so complicated, but it's also fascinating. So this is one of the little pieces of the puzzle. I just hope to finalize the puzzle <laughs> before um, Jeff and I will be retiring. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>